Grace. That was the movie that I watched that Ryan suggested. Okay. You, it's a good movie, very intelligent. The, the, in the, the movie's about uh, poverty and other things that they had on there and the truth about cancer. And that, yeah, it's okay. So, <laughs> freaking assholes. But, oh, God, you people are psychopaths who run the country and run the world. Um, guys, um, <laughs> shit. Back in college, okay, I got my job that was right down off 32nd Street, heading right down to, um, when I got my job at Southwest Airlines, I made sure that I was like a quick drive away from work. Patrick's daycare was right there and his school was right there. We walked usually, typically, I drove him to daycare and picked him up because I had to come back from work and from school. I had the freeway, I had myself centrally located between Arizona State University where I went to school, my work and that. And then we drove pretty much back and forth between work, Arizona State, and that was it. Then me and Patrick walked everywhere else. We walked to school every day and I walked back, especially on days off. I walked him to school every day. Um, uh, we also walked back and forth to the stores across the street, and we also walked. We did drive to Blockbuster when we went on Friday night. That was about the only place we drove there. We usually walked to, and sometimes Burger King was a little far out of the way when we went to Burger King. But we walked everywhere else, Little Caesars, whatever, and stuff like that. Me and Patrick walked everywhere else. He got used to walking. We walked to play basketball. We walked to his friend's house. We, walked. we pretty much walked everywhere, but I made sure everything was minimized trips. I made sure it was in short driving just because I hated the sprawl of it. And I went at certain times and I made my schedule and my work schedule around times that were not around peak driving times. I had weird schedules. And I kept it around Patrick's schedule and his school schedule because it was all about my son, all about me, all about efficiency and time because my time is the most valuable thing to me and my time with my son. So, yeah, Patrick learned that from me. And I wasn't worried about my car, I was worried about him. We got free rent. Even though I paid his mom child support for about four years, even though she didn't have him. Um, when she lost the taxes and lost that child support, she made me pick up and drop off Patrick at her aunt's house, which is on 80, we were on 32nd Street in Indian School, and they were on 80, about 85th Avenue in, and uh, Indian School. So it's on the other side. Yeah, way the fuck on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> We were over near Arcadia, and she they were out near Avondale and Tolleson. Yeah. She did this because she was losing money. And then she got so upset because of all the money she would lose again. I was like, fuck. This woman, just don't worry about you lost tax money or lost this. You're losing and using more money and resources by getting the money back so you can claim on the taxes. I tried to explain that to her. She didn't get it. They didn't even get it. I tried to explain. The one guy that would explain things to me the most intelligent was Tree Skills earlier because he talked about the... He could watch the mathematical things and the merging on traffic things. He says the more lanes you add, the more people cut across and the more it slows down traffic. And you can watch it. You can watch it as you drive. And he said, if they just would merge appropriately and not cut all the way across and just take it like, but the more lanes you add, the more congestion you cause because people cut all the way across to try to speed up their way. It's funny. He's laughing at it going, they're just stupid. <laughs> God, they're dumb. And that's what pointed out in the movie and things and stuff like that, too. Um, I noticed back, like I said, when I was going to college back when I was watching, I never watched Urban Sprout until I moved to Phoenix. Um, I pretty much walked and rode my bike everywhere growing up because I was we didn't depend on the automobile because I grew up in Las Cruces. Um, my parents took me to certain things and we could drive down to the Aggie games, but other than that, I walked. And when we moved in the other areas and stuff here, I walked everywhere when we lived over Austin Drive over towards or Nita, I'm sorry, out to uh, out like a park and all the places and even back and forth to Mayfield High School and stuff. I didn't drive until I was about, when I moved to Phoenix when I was about 18 or 19. And here, we lived, when we lived on Austin Drive, I used to walk to the Aggie basketball and football games and walk everywhere. I never had a date because I didn't drive. And I never dad asked my dad for the car because it would have competed with my sister for the car. And I never asked my parents for any kind of, you know. Um, when I did finally get a car, I worked all summer with my father. My sister had a car she was selling. My dad drove up to Wyoming, flew up to Wyoming, drove it back for me because I worked real hard that summer for that car. And I bought it my own damn self. <laughs> I worked hard too. But uh, um, and then I bought, I paid off the other two cars that mom and dad bought that my sister wrecked and then paid off two more another car after that. So it's going to, I've given away about five or six cars in my life that I've had that I didn't wasn't using and just let other people have so they can have a car. Um, I do that quite a bit. It's just people need a car in this society and I find a way to make it without one. I told you we spent when I was working on my lower income salary at here before Amy got pregnant, we were surviving and doing pretty well. She just wouldn't get the kids clean because she was stuck in this marriage at this horrible gilded cage of a marriage. And um she was uh 
we stopped driving and it saved us over thousands of dollars a year. It was almost, I think, about, yeah, of all the income we were making, it saved us, but we figured it out. It was close to about almost $1,000 a month, $800 a month. We saved about ten dollars to $12,000 a year, depending on how much driving we did before Amy doing the things. And the car payment, we just had the car paid off and just let it sit. I just mothballed it, and then only would get it together if we needed it. When she went out and was running around with all those other guys and got pregnant, we needed a car more. But we tried to use the bus, but God, that woman, God bless her. And I tried to tell her what we were doing, because she was kept telling everybody, we're so hip, we backpack everywhere like everybody in Europe. Yeah, but she just has to go out and screw other guys and get pregnant. Fuck. <laughs> I asked her, please don't do it till you leave. Just leave, and please stop. And she was training Natalie to be like her. And that fucked up things for me, too. I tried to get Natalie to stay at home. When you're a teenager, I know. My sister is telling him, too. She shouldn't have to be in a mother-like adult-type role. She shouldn't have to be a responsible older kid with the parent, the kids with, when the parent's gone and make sure the kids are okay. Well, you guys did this. Mom and dad both worked. I am getting so sick of people. I don't go to church, I don't accept your gun clubs, and I don't accept your bullshit, and, I, and that's my problem, because I don't regurgitate all the stupid shit you say to me and say it's intelligent, and I know it's unintelligent. And that's what happened to me. So I was re listen, it's kind of painful, because all the things they were talking about, yes, you can change the infrastructure. All you have to do is just take the people who are making money off of this, make them retool the vehicles, and make the reels run off of eco-energy that is produced by your body that will make that... Uh, you can do levitating craft, all kinds of different stuff and everything like that. We have Uber technology that's been sold for years and years and years to keep the oil industry going, which is the equality of chaos and stupidity in humanity. They will have to give up some of their quality of life, but it's better to have life than no life at all. They're looking to put their synapses or spirit in a robot after they fuck it. They're insane. We need to help save them from themselves so we can save ourselves. Do you guys understand how... When Judy said that thing about the computer, I thought it was talking about now. He was talking about then, what was happening then. And they, they would use the computers to use us to become consumers, to use the TV, and the, yeah. We've just heightened it up now and gotten even stupider at it, but we can be less stupid. We have the ability to flip this script and make this computer a tool, make the Internet a tool, and only use it during certain times of day for certain kind of things and promote this and promote children and people to get outside, park their cars, walk, ride bikes, um, I enjoy it, okay? It's not safe to ride a bike up and down through here on Doniana Road. There's too many guys in their big old trucks, getting four miles through the and being impatient, almost running your ass over, and then act like you're in their way, and you're a, uh, <laughs> God bless America. They act like you are in their way, and you're an inconvenience to them. Oh, wait, you're destroying my planet and killing my people and yourself at an exponential race. You're racing to your death, destroying your planet in the process, and you got things to do. i got a world to destroy. i got people to kill. I got my brain cells to kill. I gotta go fucking get fucked, paid, laid, pay my extortion. You are accepting the program. You are the biggest part of the problem. I should look at you like you fucking idiot. I'm walking here. See what I'm saying? God, guys, I love you. Yeah, that was kind of wow. I'm gonna go watch I'm Legend again and Robot and the other one is uh, old Mr. Willie Will. Alright? That didn't give me a headache. Oh, I couldn't watch it all. Well, because they had all these people there and they're. In, they're Smart people, and I really like the Udalls, Randy Udall. My mom works for uh, Calvin Udall. I've always been a big fan of the Udalls. But he was talking about things very intelligently, but he's missing a lot of big major factors. <laughs> Excuse me. I saw them when I was in Arizona when I was a kid going to college and explaining to people what they had to do, that we had to. I sit there and said that at the time when I was watching it in Arizona and growing up in the 80s. When everything is built around the car, you are a slave to the car, and you have to do everything the car wants, doesn't it? I knew it when, it, yeah, I knew that when I saw the stuff later on about President Carter that he was forced out of office because they wanted to make it look like it. Yeah, they, it's, it's just political bullshit and games. Um, and the, yeah, the government at that time was all working mostly for the oil companies, and they still do, and it's ridiculous because they're the drug companies, the oil companies, and all the people. Yeah, like that one about that cancer thing and stuff like that. It's all that lady said. It's all to sell drugs. Drugs don't cure the cancer. Cancer is a form of poisoning, and drugs just hide the symptoms. Yeah, it's not. It's, this is insane. It's just a little good chaos. You guys are nuts, man. We've got to stop the killing of ourselves. We're relatively molecularly connected. I mean, no matter how much you try to hide the cesspool from you, the cesspool is going to find you, consume you, and, and just, yeah, and the North living off the South on that one thing with the poverty thing, guys, when this all goes boom, it's going to take out. The, the planet is already focusing its 
place it needs to get rid of. And the, the, the south is more mechanized and producing more of the carbon emissions, so that's where those volcanoes are going to go. You can try to direct them away, but I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, you can look at it that way, but even if they do them in the south, it's going to get colder in the north, and you're still, you know what I mean? And you repopulate. You guys are nuts, man. You guys are sick, psychopaths, stupid asses. Just stop what you're doing now. Just put on the brakes and just start again and just start doing like I have plenty. The infrastructures and the jobs caused by it and the drastic changes will tell the planet you're really serious, tell everybody you're really serious. You can stop making these people force, they're forced labor camps to be over consumers, over production, planet destroyers. Just sit them down, feed them, house them and start building houses for them and have them group together, start building houses. Tearing down this infrastructure was built on a mass consumer self-consumption overproduction and self-destruction and turn them into healthy people again. Get them walking, get them helping, get them talking, get them excited about their communities because they're saving their communities, their world, and they're doing it for themselves. Localizing their markets is common sense and intelligence. It'll be a beautiful place to live and it can be real quick. You just have to look at somebody more intelligent than you and understand what he's talking about. Stop. I'm not schizophrenic. You're a fucking psychopath. Okay. Don't ever talk to me again, you fucking moron. God, any of you. Any of you. Michio Kako, I love you. You're a cockahead. Knock it off. I'm not calling you names. I'm telling the truth on you. You're full of shit. Fossil fuel still is efficient. Bullshit. You're so fucking stupid. You don't. You're. You work for the oil companies. You fucking bought and sold stupid little piece of shit. You pass yourself off as an intelligent scientist, and you're not. The only one that's close to a decent scientist is, is Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he is a good scientist. I'm not. Like, you hang out with fucking moronic assholes, and they make you look stupider than you are. Knock it the fuck off and come hang out with me. I'm way more fun. And if I get out of here on my release, I get to hang out with Gabriel Iglesias, uh, George Lopez, and Cheech and Chuck. Dude, you'll have fun. Yeah, you will. Will Smith likes me. Yeah, he does. You will have fun. You will hang out with fun people. You will have a good time. Dude, Neil, you've got to. Neil, 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 Neil. Bro, bro, help me, please. You are about the only intelligent one that I can tolerate. <laughs> I had to sit and listen to that tolerance thing. I'm like sitting there going, equating it all, going, shut the fuck up. You can't tell me what I can. I can tell you not to read the Koran if you can't equate it properly and stop trying to sell complete illiterate bullshit. This guy's more correct, but he's angry and he's not getting it. I can explain it to him and you and shut you both up. Oh, I'll kick all y'all's asses. Turn me loose in that room. No, shut up. I'm going to explain to you what he's talking about. But are you going to tell Muhammad and Jesus and the voices that talk to them and equate for them and explain it, what they were saying and what they're thinking? You have the balls to tell me what I think, do, and say, and that I left for you? We leave these notes for you to equate yourselves into peace and non-planet destroying idiots. The book of Daniel is quite clear that these cars, bars, wars, and drones are destroying existence of and it needs to be stopped. It needs to stop. Oi, orale, tu entiendes? Muy bien, let's go. Do it! Don't you argue over the nature of the apostles, the prophets, and the messiahs, and what you should do as a religious human being that is a religious understanding scientist that can equate intelligently and live intelligently. I am from that branch and that tree and that spot where that piece of fruit grew. I am the one like Pascal. I am the one like Salad, and I am the one like Jesus. I can prove it. You can't shut up. Stop talking. Stop telling me what they thought and what they said and what they did. I will tell you. And I prove it. Knock it off. I feel better now. I'm going to go watch the movie. I am legend. I like that one. All right, dog. I love you, too. See you soon. All right. Blessings and peace.